Good morning. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm John Drake, and I'm the founder of the Lingap Children's Foundation, which is the Philippine orphanage that you guys support. And uh, this is my wife, Judy, sitting over here in the front row. Uh, she's along with me today. Thank you. I have just a few things that I want to tell you this morning, but I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, it's been a pretty emotionally rough couple of weeks for us, and uh, I'm going to get choked up. I'm telling you that right now. I apologize. People say, why do you always make us cry? I don't know. Why do you make, it makes me cry. I'm sorry. Uh, but first of all, uh, you recently did a second collection on our behalf, and um, you guys raised an astounding $19,209 for us. I, I honestly don't know how to say thank you for that. You, I, you are our biggest single organizational supporter. And uh, we could not do this project without you, and I just want to make sure that you understand that. Um, the second thing I want to tell you is that a couple weeks ago we had a, an earthquake that hit the Philippines. It was a 7.4 magnitude earthquake, but thank God there was no damage at the Lingap Center and we had uh, no injuries. Immediately following that, three weeks later, we had Typhoon Yolanda. Um, and it was making a beeline for the center. Um, it was the worst typhoon ever in recorded history and it was coming right towards us. And um, it was a scary night, not only for the kids, but I'll tell you, I was a mess. Um, I was started getting text messages from them, from the manager of the center, and she said, uh, the wind is coming up, people are evacuating into the center because ours is a concrete building. Um, we just lost, the, the power is gone. Um, the kids? The kids are praying the rosary just as fast as they can. And then it went silent. And I have to tell you, that was the longest 12 hours of my life uh, because I absolutely knew that the Lingap Center and all the kids were gone. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, our time, I got a text message and all it said was, the sun is shining. We had... We had no injuries and no damage of any kind. Nothing. And if any of you think for even a moment that God does not have his hands extended over the Lingap Center, come see me after Mass and we'll chat. Okay? Because he truly, truly does. I will say we had a hundred terrified little kids, however, um, but what they wanted to do was they wanted to help the typhoon victims. It's really interesting because I'm always talking to them about helping others is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. So they wanted to help. And what they did is we wound up doing two relief missions. And they put together packets of rice, uh, water, and the boys baked 1,200 loaves of bread. And we went to northern Cebu on a relief mission. And about the, the typhoon hit about 50 miles from the Lingap Center, and the devastation is beyond description. Um, it was just unbelievable. And we came across a lady. She was an elderly lady, and she was laying beside the road. She was crippled. And we stopped, and she was uh, in terrible shape. And I started giving her water. And she's crying. And, you know, oh, thank you, thank you for saving me. I thought I was going to die here. And the children are watching this. And I'm thinking, how in the world, why am I here in the middle of the worst typhoon in recorded history doing this? The people that should be seeing this are those people who make the Lingap Project possible. You are the ones. You are the ones that should have seen that. You were there with me that day because without you, we wouldn't have been there. And that's true. We came back, uh, when we were going out, the kids were singing and having a good time in the, in the van, but as we came back, there was a total silence because they saw things that children that age should just, just should not see. So they were very quiet. So on the way back, we only took about a third of the kids with us, and uh, I told them all, when you get back, you have to tell all the rest of them what you saw, what you experienced, and they did. 
And some of the kids talked for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Some of them were choked up that they couldn't say anything. They were just crying the entire time. But later that evening, three of them, individually, not together as a group, but individually came to see me and they said, Tito, we know what we want to be when we grow up. We want to help other people. We want to grow up to be just like you. Just like you. Thank you all very, very, very much.